beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the Word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Zekate parato shaba karyanda kapros kotos ke pres ketos sa pres ketos se batari ketos abaria. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a spectacular miracle that the Lord wants to do for many people. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a group of people in the realm of the spirit. You used to hear God in profound dimensions, but from the beginning of this year, something happened to your hearing. And it's an attack from the gate of hell. Now, please pay attention. I'm speaking by the spirit. It's an attack from darkness upon your hearing. And it's like something has closed you. Some of you don't even know you are part of it. I'm about to pray for you. Because that, that prophetic dimension, you need it to hear what I want to teach you tonight. You need it. There are some dimensions of spiritual communication that you cannot understand it scientifically. And the Lord is asking me to pray. Therefore, Father, I stretch my hands on your people. Every gate of the prophetic that has been closed, every gate, every gate, the hearing ear, let that grace be released right now. The hearing ear, the hearing ear, sata kaparata. Many of you will hear the sound of angels instantly, instantly, inside, outside, those following on our social media platform. The Lord is opening. The Lord is opening prophetic dimensions. The sharing of the spirit. Authentic sharing. Not nonsense. An authentic sharing. Shakataba. Sheketekata. Rakatapakotosia. For some of you it is restoration. 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 What happened to your hearing? That you no longer hear the sounds of the spirit. Like fire is coming on the ear of people. Fire, 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 active fire falling on people. Fire, a restoration of hearing. A restoration of hearing. A restoration of hearing. Lift your hands. There are people here, your dreams used to be prophetic, but it was hard. And my God, it's a something is happening to your spirit, man. The hand of God is coming upon your spirit man the hand of god coming upon your spirit man right now dreams 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 shaka patata stretch dreams where you will understand the counsel of god in the visions of the night the counsel of god in the visions of the night the counsel of God in the visions of the night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
The last thing I'll pray for before we sit down is sensitivity. Listen, let me tell you. If you lack sensitivity in this season and in this time, you will never be able to be in sync with what God is saying. Sensitivity is like breathing in the realm of the spirit. To be able to understand the impulses of the spirit and align yourself with what the spirit is doing and saying. He said the sons of Issachar, they had an understanding of the time and they knew what Israel ought to do. I want to pray for you. There is a grace that makes men sensitive. Many of us used to be sensitive, especially our sisters. Something has happened to your sensitivity. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. This is a mountain of the Lord's house. Where grace is sufficient. Grace is sufficient. Right now, I stretch my hands. May that grace begin to fall on men and women. Let it fall, let it fall. Sensitivity. Discernment. Sensitivity. Discernment. Sensitivity. Discernment. To the speakings of the Spirit. Sensitivity. Discernment. To the speakings of the Spirit. Mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne, you were mighty on your throne, hey, mighty on your throne, you were mighty in this place, mighty on your throne, you were mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne, you were mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne, you are mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. Mighty in my life. Mighty in my life. Mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. Mighty in my life. Mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. Mighty in my life. Mighty in my life. Mighty in my life. Father, we pray that you go ahead and do everything you intend for us to experience tonight. Right beyond our dimensions, right beyond our perceptions, right beyond our yieldedness. I know God, I pray that you activate strange things in the lives of people. Strange things in the lives of people. Please sit down carefully if you can. Tonight will be a night of strange impartations. If you can, just sit down and let your heart be open. Let your spirit be sensitive. No carelessness, no distraction. Please, Koinonia is a place of impartation. You need impartation to rise and step into your prophetic destiny. There are times that certain things need to be activated. Nothing can cover for noise and stories. You must come into the reality of certain experiences. And impartation is one of the platforms that can bring you into those realities. Once again, I welcome everyone. This is Koinonia. Tonight is a night of strange impartations. And there is a reason why God is doing it. There is a reason why God is bringing us to this dimension of impartations. It's not just for nothing. Listen, in the course of my teaching, I'll be very brief tonight. But in the course of my teachings, there will be different kinds of anointings just coming in. You get this in Koinonia. Koinonia is a place where things are activated. And so when your word comes, it will come upon you. Yours is just to be sensitive. As I teach, there will be dispensing of graces. Dispensing of graces. Be sensitive. Don't just hear what I'm saying. A time will come. Yours will come upon you. So it's going to be a noisy meeting. Don't worry. You will hear what I'm saying. 
But as I teach, people will receive things. Will receive things inside, outside, everywhere. You will receive things. Listen. The church must pay the price for a genuine anointing that will really be able to bring God to the scene. The church must pay the price for a genuine, authentic anointing that will be able to bring true results for people. The only way we can become a revelation of the Christ, I'm telling you this, is to contend for a dimension in the spirit that affords us the privilege of hosting superior dimensions of the presence and the power of God. Talk is cheap. It's easy to make a lot of noise in the body of Christ. It's easy to stand upon many doctrinal and theological dissertations communicating the things that we believe should be. But in the final analysis, people need to experience the reality of the kingdom. And I think this is where a lot of we pastors have not done justice for people. A lot of us are speaking prophets. A lot of us are mighty pastors and apostles and prophets and bishops. We can communicate spiritual reality. But the challenge is when it comes to the practical demonstration of the essence of our communication. We try to create all kinds of theological excuses. So there are so many things we teach that God is. There are so many things we teach that God can do. There are so many realities we, we whet the appetite of God's people by opening them up to the possibilities that can be in the spirit. But it is so frustrating when people's appetites are to the apex Yet we sustain the power and the life to experientially draw them into those experiences. So we teach on healing. We teach on different kinds of healing. Different dimensions of healing. And then in the final analysis, the sick person still goes back sick. The cancer patient still goes back with, with their cancers. We are happy about dispensing theologically arranged communications but the bible says listen the bible tells us that the gospel listen is not just about the excellency of speech right but the demonstration of power to the end that the faith of people will not be founded upon the wisdom of men but upon the power of god no matter what you say about God, if you cannot bring him to the scene for me to relate with his might, you have wasted my time. I may applaud you for your intelligence and your ability to be flawless in your research. But let me tell you something. In the final analysis, people need to be transformed. Demons are not a theory. They are real. Sicknesses are not a theory. They are real oppression is not a theory it is real poverty is not a theory it is real only preaching largely are theories blessed is he who comes in the name of our god blessed is he who comes in the name of our god blessed is he Comes in the name of God. Hallelujah. The Lord showed me a vision a few days ago. And in that vision, I saw so many people in the church weary and tired. That's what I saw in the vision. Including pastors. I saw people seated and stranded. No message. Because everything to be preached have been preached. I saw members frustrated and humiliated. And the Lord began to reveal to me that it is a strategy 
please pay attention it's a prophetic teaching tonight it's a strategy by the kingdom of darkness because when you study when you listen to my teaching why revivals fail i shared with you dear a strategy with which satan uses to defeat many believers satan will never strike you at your point of strength he knows that all men are human although we are divine there is a human component to us so the moment you are doing the work of the kingdom advancing the purposes of the kingdom fervent in prayer strong in the word, the devil will not attack you he knows that there is one thing that is common to all men is called exhaustion the reality of our humanity that no matter how powerful you are no matter how anointed you are a time must come when the reality of your humanity will meet up with you it is at that point that men are separated from the boys it is at that point that only those who sustain a system in the spirit to continue will stand i saw that vision i saw faces i recognized and i could not believe that such great men could be weary now you see a man of god can be weary and you will not know because don't mistaken the grace upon a man to dispense truth and his personal growth and progress there are two different things i can be as dry and weary as whatever but when i stand upon this pulpit the anointing that comes with my office will make me act so flawless you will not know that i'm at the verge of giving up are we together most times we mistaking the grace and the unction that accompanies the office of a man to mean that because that grace looks ever fresh ever flowing in power that it necessarily means the person is highly motivated and happy no there are times i've been so tired physically tired going for meetings and i i can sometimes it looks like i can't stand for 15 minutes but the moment i hold that mic i no longer become joshua selman an apostolic anointing comes and i can stand for hours now you may mistake in my strength to mean that i am not weak do you know sometimes when I get back home, even to eat becomes a problem? Are we together? So I saw weariness in that vision. I saw many people gassing out in prayer, literally like a meter, just diminishing. I saw people gassing out in their world level. And one of the areas that I saw people crying is the area of not getting resolved financially and otherwise it was frustrating people i saw quarrels between people fathers mothers different people i saw pastors fighting themselves and i was wondering what is the meaning of all this nonsense and the lord told me this is what the devil wants to bring he's taking advantage of the economic tide that is sweeping the nations as a tool and he wants to wreak havoc in the lives of people are we together Part of the advantages of a true apostolic ministry is to have an eye that sees and the ability to perceive the impulses of the spirit part time and communicate to people the realities that are the emphasis of God for that moment. That's why we pray for perception because there are many of us, if your perception were alive, you would have picked the signal. Let me tell you something. It's important to gauge your spiritual growth. Don't let men clap you into spiritual mediocrity. What are you an MOG for when you cannot perceive the impulses of the spirit? What are you a campus fellowship president for? Or a pastor or an apostle? When the things of the spirit happen, discussions are going on in the realm of the spirit and your presence cannot be registered because you have not sustained an ability to rise beyond your flesh. And understand the speakings of the spirit hallelujah ministry is not all about preaching but the ability to perceive the impulses of people when God makes you a leader he commits unto you the destinies of people it's your responsibility now to be in sync with the spirit Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 says, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower. It says, and I will see what the Lord will say. Not hear what he will say. See, perceive, conceive what he's saying.
when I saw this my heart really broke especially when I saw faces I could recognize I saw that people had gas out truly mothers who used to have a very strong prayer altar I saw the thing going down usually it starts through carelessness here and there even if you don't pray one week it doesn't matter there's grace for me I'll come again and then before you know it completely void of power and you know the interesting thing no matter how bad you are the devil will never strike you he's smart if he strikes you you will go for a retreat very fast and you'll come back so he will allow you to keep moving there is a threshold level it's like a gauge in the spirit you keep going down he will not strike keep going down one day he will aim at you and if not for the mercy of God and the prophetic he will hit you bad blessed is he who comes in the name of our God blessed is he who comes in the name of our God blessed is he who comes in the name of our God hallelujah I will share with you three keys the Lord revealed to me that if not managed will strengthen the power of darkness to cause the havoc that it plans to cause take note of this month july you see this month july there is there is intense warfare going on in the realm of the spirit those who are sensitive know those who are not sensitive just assume and move carelessly and foolishly until they become victims this month mark this month july you see is a month of intense spiritual building you need to build capacity for the months to come. Victory is assured, but the strength of many will be tested in the months to come. You will see this happen. The strength of men of God, the strength of people, they are, their spiritual capacity will be tested. And only those who have built fortification in the spirit, the Bible says for us to redeem the time, take advantage of the time, are we together so the devil is attacking the prayer lives of people dramatically you see he's not attacking it by stopping you from praying I will show you the things the first thing that the devil is using to sabotage the prophetic advancement of believers and the church listen is exhaustion the reality of the weariness of our bodies the reality of that weariness exhaustion psychological exhaustion physical exhaustion are we together so when people gas out they come to a point where it no longer makes sense to wait upon the Lord and trust the Lord because many hopes have been disappointed many dreams seemingly look like they are shattered people look at their experience versus their prophecy and it does not match and so many are fainting including the great ones who should stand to strengthen many people and there's nothing to be embarrassed there that's why god is opening us up to it so that we will rise is god blessing us exhaustion weariness that fatigue that spiritual fatigue where you want to study your Bible and you just look at it and it looks like a burden you want to open your Bible and study it looks like a burden you buy books but you don't read them you buy DVDs but you can't watch them there seems to be a spirit that takes advantage of our humanity and our weariness so you are buying books you are buying tapes you are downloading messages those around will think you are taking advantage of them but you know that it's been a long time since you made contact with these resources not because you are not of God it's called weariness, exhaustion even the young men shall faint and the youth will utterly fall he says that's the first thing 
that I saw that the devil is taking advantage of to destroy people. Just destroy people. Just destroy people. The second thing that the Lord revealed to me is financial limitation. Write it down. I saw a lot of people whose focus had been distracted and the reason was because there were no resources. I saw God, churches, groups, people, even people who used to participate actively in the house of God, prayer meetings, prayer groups, the reality of the stress and strain that lack of finances brings. A lot of people started asking themselves questions. Look, we're, we're humans. Let's go and, and, and solve our family needs first. And it's a plot. It's a plot by darkness. Are we together? Where believers go to pray and they can't pray because of financial weariness. And even if they pray, the entire circumference of their prayer is lamentation and a plea for open heavens. You may not realize it, but it's a strategy. It's a strategy. Listen, let me tell you something. Satan weighs the governments of nations like a treasure on a balance and manipulates them according to his desire. This thing called mammon is Satan's weapon of mass destruction. Mammon. Mammon. That spirit, the only spirit that Jesus taught that you can worship either him or that spirit. He never said Satan. He said you cannot serve two masters. So in any way, your servanthood must be registered. Either to God or to mammon. Hallelujah. In that vision, I saw people losing jobs. Companies downsizing people. There are not many times you hear me speak prophetically like this. But you write it and see. I saw it happening to people. Are we together? Several people confused. Even, do you know that pastors and churches went down financially because their members didn't have the means you know offerings and tithes and all of that and it was a weariness to people and subtly the teachings about spiritual growth the teachings about empowerment intimacy encounter began to diminish because the pastors were forced to have to continue talking about finances it became as though it was the only key that would have to keep the people coming to the churches Are we together? When I saw this thing, my heart dropped. And I said, my God, what is this? You have to do something about this nonsense. Because the devil wants to take advantage of the economic tide that is sweeping Africa. And that spirit that is sweeping Nigeria. That bitterness, that offense. Many people no longer pay attention to God. You meet somebody and talk to him about spiritual growth. And the person will even tell you to go away. Why? Because... We have said it unapologetically in this ministry that when your finances is not secured, it will affect your spiritual life. There's no confusion about it. I hope you believe what I'm sharing with you. Oh, please, you better do. Please, you better do. Because it will happen. The third thing I saw was... It's like flies. You know how house flies. Like a swarm of flies. Now there are times I've seen these things prophetically and I've shared them here over. But I saw a swarm of flies just coming across regions. Ah, and I looked at it and the Lord took my mind back to the plague. One of the plague that happened in the days of Moses. When those, those swamp of flies came around and began to consume people. And I had in my spirit the ministry of the devourer. Manifesting as sicknesses. Manifesting as tragic events. And ultimately death. I saw this thing. Rampant manifestation of mysterious sicknesses. That cannot be diagnosed in hospitals. They will check you with machines and say nothing is, is happening. Hmm. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed are you, for you come in the name of our God. I'm not a prophet of doom. But I saw the tears in Nigeria in the month of September. It was almost unbearable. I'm not, just listen to me, I've not finished preaching. I'm not a prophet of doom. But I saw it was bad. Economically and otherwise. It was, it was like this country was completely clueless and at a point of a mess. I saw people being um, what do they call it? Laid off from work. Completely laid off. Husbands, wives, laid off. Their services were no longer needed. In different sectors, including government sectors. They downsized people. Because they needed to accommodate what was happening. Are we together? I saw an increase in crime rate. Theft. Stealing. Including stealing people. Not just stealing things, stealing people. Why is God revealing this? To scare you? No. God is revealing this to strengthen you. He will never bring a prophecy without a strategy. Just keep following. There is always an exemption for the church. But the problem most times is we don't pay attention. There are people who hear what I'm saying now. I'm, I'm sorry, especially for elderly people. They just shut down and say, all these idiots talking again and then until it happens and then we become victims of situations and circumstances you see let me tell you something prophecy prophecy in its purest form was designed not just to give people to make people privy to something that will happen the most important part of prophecy is the strategy for exemption not what will happen the strategy for exemption any true prophet that brings a word from the lord especially if it's a word that is on the negative side if it came from god god must be able to speak to his people and say this is a strategy you can choose it especially for certain things that are written judgments you cannot pray them away but there is a system like the flood of noah there was a system that was built called the ark like the passing of the angel of death upon egypt the mystery of the blood of the lamb and the passover right it was the mystery of exemption but you see the church we we have this ugly mentality which came from a misguided understanding of what the new testament teaches I can relate with God. I don't need to hear anybody. Leave me alone. If it's so, God will speak to me. If God has not spoken to me, I will not listen. Let me tell you something. Listen. I was teaching the school of ministry students. Our spiritual growth is based on our personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But the advancement of the kingdom is based on covenants. You have to understand this. Your spiritual growth and my spiritual growth is based on my personal encounter my knowledge of who God is, his ways, and that's how I grow. In the Old Testament, it used to be through prophets and mediums. But now the Bible tells us that Jesus has come as a mediator. He's opened the new and living way to all of us. We can now access God directly in terms of spiritual growth. But the advancement of God's kingdom is not general. God finds men and enters a covenant with those men to represent his dealings in a particular dimension and every time god wants to deal with the territory in that dimension it must come through those channels they are called spiritual tribes they represent the communication of god's purposes in a dimension so when you talk about faith every time god wants to bring his speakings as regards the word of faith there are spiritual channels he has entered a personal covenant with and align them to be able to communicate his purposes in that respect 
Bishop Oyedeko, Kenneth Copeland. You can trace that spiritual tribe and they represent his communications in that regard. Are we together? There are other dimensions. When the spirit of revival wants to fall upon the nation, there are people who represent the spiritual tribe that communicates that reality to the world. It's not general. So your tapping into that possibility only becomes on the strength of your alignment with what God is doing. When God wants to come in in the area of finances and prosperity, I know that everyone will be blessed, but there are people who have a personal covenant with God that represent his speakings in that regard. You will never ignore their ministry and hear the current dealings of the spirit as far as that is concerned. So the advancement of the kingdom it's not based on personal relationship it's based on covenants god calls a man called abraham the first man in the bible who showed us that men can walk by faith with god are we together he is god's type of faith the only reason why we can tap into the possibilities of god as far as the blessing is concerned is on the strength of the covenant that god entered with one man called abraham are we together? When God wanted to salvage a nation, he used one man called Moses. Entered a personal covenant with Moses that afforded Moses an unusual access to God beyond his personal spiritual growth because Moses himself did not make the cut to the promised land. How be it based on that covenant to an extent that although Moses may have failed spiritually in the book of Jude, an angel came to carry his body and Satan still wanted the dead body because they represent systems. They are not just human beings. They are systems. Elijah was a man who represented God's system. God's covenant of reformation. God's covenant of, of um, forerunning revivals. He's called Elijah the Tishbite. Are we together? So, by the time you allow people to begin to corrupt your mind and say, don't make it look like only some people can hear God. No, the idea is not a show of superiority. The idea is an election by grace where men have become like trees. They are like spiritual vines and your connection to them is how you are able to tap into certain possibilities. I've shared it with us here. Abraham gave birth to Ishmael with Hagar. Is that true? Hagar was crying. Ishmael was crying. But the Bible says God heard the voice of the young lad. Not the voice of Hagar. Why? Because when God looked at Ishmael, he saw Abraham and received and saw the covenant. God, more often times to say, he blessed Solomon for the sake of his father, David. Are we together when the kingdom was about to be advanced after Christ came he got 12 men entered a personal covenant with them listen let me tell you there is a difference between those apostles and us we are equal in Christ but they were men who entered a certain kind of covenant with God that represented the advancement of God's kingdom if Satan killed all those 12 apostles the kingdom could not be advanced because it was through them that it would be spread. That's why God protected them. Angels had to come and open prisons to force them to go out. Are we together? One man called John, the beloved, had a personal understanding. It was his personal covenant with God that granted him access to show us the revelation, the apocalypse, the unfolding of prophecy. There are still men like that on the earth. There are not many, but there are. In fact, the system of God's electing these men is always in twelves. There's no time to teach you on that. That God's apostolic governing system is always in twelves. So in, in regions, you will always find this number, twelve. The apostolic spiritual governing council of God. They may not even know themselves. But they represent God's order of activities. Are we together? 
But you see, when the devil wants to deceive you, he will bring pride and make you look like I can access the throne of God by myself. I, am, I don't need to hear anything. Even when God is giving a word of caution, most times we don't listen and we say, no, 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 no. I'm nobody should do this and that and that. And then, you know, um, I don't even want to go into that, that teaching because it will take our whole time. As you know, I love the body of Christ. I am the last person who will fight the body of Christ. I love the body of Christ and I love the different dimensions of spiritual operation. But then I am always quick to attack imbalances, especially when they get to a level where they can corrupt the authenticity of the work of believers. The moment an imbalance gets so bad, that it can bring you out of spiritual alignment it calls for concern are we together and one of it is of course as we know the concept of grace are we together now now when you understand the concept of grace and you isolate it with respect to other things that god is doing it becomes an error grace as a doctrine on its own is an error it only makes sense when you add it together and you piece it together with every other thing God is doing. When you study the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, theologically speaking, contains the highest church truth. Are we together? Where Apostle Paul was teaching the church, he was giving them certain doctrines, the entire scope of a Christian experience. Six chapters, which were a communication of the entire activities of the believer. So it starts theologically speaking with what we call sitting, right? You've, heard, you've read that and many of you have heard it in different messages. It was that revelation came by a man called Watchman Nee. Watchman Nee was the, the, the apostle that God used to communicate the realities of redemption in a very balanced and authentic way to the body of Christ. And so that position of sitting, the Bible starts in the book of Ephesians teaching us how in fact when it starts in chapter 1 it never talks about us it talks about Christ and all that he has done when you start reading chapter 2 it now brings us into the scene right we are now raised up with Christ so the revelation of God's grace is seen in chapter 1 and 2 and it is true that the foundation of a believer's life is predicated upon the grace of God there are certain things that we can never have ourselves like righteousness it is impossible for anybody to have righteousness by himself. The Bible says the best of our righteousness is as filthy rags. And do not confuse righteousness and uprightness. They are not the same. Righteousness and uprightness are not the same. Righteousness is a gift from God. Uprightness is our response, the advantage, our, our work of faith. I'm just giving us, are you getting blessed? I just want to establish a few things before we continue it's very very important so the bible starts teaching us on the grace of god and all the possibilities that come with that grace all that christ had done for us in his death his burial his resurrection and his ascension into heaven in fact it was on the strength of that that paul began to teach in chapter in verse 17 he said for this cause I have a passion for you understanding this this is the foundation of your victory in christ and for this cause i paul bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you right the spirit of revelation you know and understanding that your eyes being enlightened or flooded with light that you may know certain things one is the hope of your calling and then you know the power that raised christ that was exalted when christ was raised from the dead you know and, and all of that and paul begins to speak he knew that the church needs to know that but paul did not just walk there he didn't stop there he began to talk about what is called theologically our walk of faith right character now you taking advantage of the grace of god I told you there's, there are two dimensions to the grace of God. There is the grace of God as unmerited access and there is the grace of God as power to live like Christ. They are all called grace. Don't just confuse them. Grace does not just mean what God has done and we receive by faith. There is a dimension of grace that represents everything Christ has done that we could not do. And he gave it to us. We receive it by faith. But there is a dimension of grace that empowers us to do 
we will do but it's not by our strength are we together and then he wraps up the book of Ephesians with what is called the the you know uh, standing and then our, our, our walk and then you know sitting and standing then it talks of spiritual warfare our ability to contend against powers and principalities and listen every doctrine that must build a believer please hear me every doctrine that must build a believer must sustain all these components whenever there is a deviation from this pattern it will lead to error if you try to teach people how to do warfare how to do character and you forget the grace of god you will lead them into error and legalism are we together when you try to bring isolate the doctrine of holiness without giving men the foundation of faith you will lead to self-righteousness which does not hold any weight in the spirit and so it must be in that order the first thing believers must understand about god is not warfare is the grace of god and that's encapsulated in what we call the gospel of salvation a revelation of the substitutionary work of uh, uh, jesus christ which is a reflection of the love of the father so when we see that grace then our walking right now by faith is our own participation that's called the gospel of the kingdom our reward in gratitude and honor for that sacrifice for us and then our standing it says haven't done all to stand stand Now, let me tell you something. The part of this truth you ignore is the path the devil will use to destroy your life. You can't choose sitting as it were. Grace. You can't choose kingdom just like that and isolate it. You can't choose deliverance just like that. There's a series on it and you can get it after the service. It's called the full gospel. Where all these doctrines were examined one by one. Their imperfections, their imbalances, to the end that the bride of Christ will become perfect. He said, Come and I will show you the Lamb's wife. He said, And he showed me a city equal in length, equal in breadth, equal in height. And part of the possibilities in the kingdom is the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. God stations these men so that they can communicate the speakings of the spirit and it is that same order of god's system that was mimicked by the antichrist system when you read the book of revelations from uh, uh, chapter 13 and the rest the bible tells us that satan empowered the beast the beast will now empower the false prophets the same order the same way god empowers his apostles and prophets to communicate certain things satan empowers the beast who empowers the false prophets and then they continue carrying out their agenda so there is a system spiritual growth is not haphazard you don't choose how you want it's not even just how your pastor said so there is an irrefutable pattern that has not changed it did not change just because um god jesus christ came and died for us no it's an eternal pattern it was carved out of who God is, not what he is doing. Are we together? There are people who believe in miracles, but they do not believe in the prophetic and the apostolic. That lapse is Satan's authorization in their life. There are people who do not believe in the gift of the spirit, but they are well-meaning people. That lapse is satan's you know advantage in their life there are people for instance who believe in grace but they may not believe in holiness and righteousness and all of that and satan takes advantage of it there are people who believe in deliverance but may not believe in the grace of god and satan takes advantage and they are forever fighting every and anything the key is not exemption the key is balance everybody say balance say it again balance the key is balance because all of these things are components of the same system. Hallelujah. And so I want you to believe the prophetic is real. It is still functional. It did not die with the New Testament. The prophetic is real. 
now i know that here and there people may have exaggerated certain dimensions of it but it's not enough reason for us to throw the baby and the bad water lives can be rescued when we understand what god is saying and the bible says he that hears he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit saith to the churches so if he's talking to one person he's talking to the ecclesia the church hallelujah pray one minute and say lord i hear what you are saying i'm not rebellious i hear what you are saying you are speaking to the church i am part of the church and i hear what you are saying i hear what you are saying i'm not a rebel i hear what you are saying i hear what you are saying go ahead and pray strategies right now that God revealed to me and then we we'll take some time and really pray I want us to seriously pray tonight and God will grant us that grace are we together if you fight economic empowerment get set to struggle spiritually promise made a statement when he came to receive the offering and he said having abundance of supplies will increase your prayer life and minimize your prayer points how true you see let me tell you something this system that we live in cosmos is a system that was designed intelligently are we together god made the heavens and the earth but the system the social strata and its civilization was nicely modeled and built by lucifer the custodian of the antichrist system and he built it such that our civilization will only thrive on economic empowerment please listen are we together now and part of the imbalance that we're talking about is what has produced believers who are prayerful loving but we have not paid attention to our finances and in this season our flaw is becoming obvious are we together many anointed churches are seen right now that they cannot buy generator for their prayer meetings many churches that will have to depend on rent or something the man the landlord may be an unbeliever and he may get up under the influence of a strange spirit and say no more use of this venue it is locked and what happens the sheep is scattered it's a strategy by the pit of hell because the bible says the borrower is and will always be slave to the lender so our concept of empowerment must be seen not just as a desire to be rich and to be money mongers. Please get this. If that is your thinking, you are already in error. The concept of empowerment is to rise to a level where we overcome the influence of mammon. That spirit that is, is compelling the nations to worship her. There is a spirit. It's called mammon. If you have not seen that spirit, just look around our government and you will know that that spirit is being worshipped. The obsession for the worship of images and the worship of Lucifer did not start in our generation. Right? Remember when a king built 90 solid feet, go and said at the sound of music, everybody will bow down and worship. And your survival in that territory depended on your willingness to bow. Some gentlemen said, oh king, no. They found another system of exemption and they changed the tide. Businesses are bowing already. Churches are bowing already. Systems are coming to their knees. 
I've heard men of God who didn't used to talk about certain things. And I've been surprised hearing the way they are beginning to be so obsessed about financial principles that are not consistent with the ways of the Lord. And the reason is because for every leader, what faith is to the realm of the spirit, that's what finance is to this realm. You must pay the school fees of your child. Are we together? And that reality is beginning to punish a lot of people to the detriment of their spiritual life. But everybody said there is a way out. Shout it, say there is a way out. The way out of financial hardship in this season goes beyond investments, goes beyond business. Let me tell you what the Holy Ghost told me. You see, if you do investments, you need money to make money. Is that true? You need money to make money. If you do business, you are selling products, you are selling services and that's all right. But the problem is that the products you are selling have a fixed price and cannot be manipulated ordinarily. Are we together? Meaning there is a limit to what can come into your hand. There is a limit to patronage and all of that. But the key, I've said it again and again, is when you become the product yourself. Not just that you offer services, you become the service. When you become valuable, not just have things that are valuable, but you yourself as a person, you rise to a point where you become an epitome of value. You have entered your financial Sabbath, I guarantee you. The most expensive commodity for instance on earth is the anointing. And when you have the anointing, we used to jokingly say it sometimes with a Jimmy, how that we watch people who we know do not know one, maybe one twentieth of the business principles we should know but because they possess the most expensive commodity on earth which is the anointing and its ability to provide supernatural solutions they exempt themselves from the tide and the grip of mammon so god's call for us in this season as believers to exempt us from the economic turmoil that is whipping the nations and that will inevitably come and lash a lot of people in nigeria is not only to surround ourselves with valuable things valuable things are important but be the value yourself and we have that advantage because the holy ghost is here to help us that's why i said your greatest business strategy in this season is to labor in the spirit and carry something authentic and supernatural you will enter the sabbath of your life do you believe what I'm saying? Please believe it.
dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salmon and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.